Welcome to week two of business law. This is going to be an exciting week for all of us. This is the area of tort law and product liability. Product liability in tort law. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the source of tort law. As you know already, the source of tort law is common law. Common law. Common law being court decisions that have accumulated over time and formed this area of law called tort law. A tort is not a chocolate cake, layer cake with ovarian cream and cherries. That's not a tort. Well, that is a tort, but not the tort we're talking about. We are talking about legal torts, which are civil wrongs. For every crime, there's a tort. So think O.J. Simpson when he allegedly murdered um, his wife and uh, Mr. Goldman. Uh, that was a crime, uh, and he was charged and... Uh, and the glove didn't fit, so he was acquitted, uh, found not guilty, not meaning he's innocent, but he was found not guilty. Then he was sued, and he was sued for the tort of wrongful death, and he lost that case. So understand there are basically two varieties of torts. They are intentional torts, those in that intent is an element of the uh, offense, uh, element of the tort, I should say. So trespass, uh, defamation, false imprisonment, uh, things like that. You have to have intentionally trespassed, etc. cetera. Uh, so there are, are, are a vast number of intentional torts. So every crime has a tort, so think about that. And every crime has, you have to have a level of intent. Uh, negligence is the other major area of torts. Negligence is, is a fairly uh, easy formula. It's four elements, duty, breach, causation, damages. This is the most common issue for businesses are negligence claim that you fail to uh, uh, meet your duty of care. Strict liability is a situation where the product or the activity is so ultra hazardous, doesn't matter the level of care you took. If someone's injured, you're liable. Think, you know, if you, if you uh, keep uh, dangerous animals or something, that's, uh, and somebody gets bitten, in fact, even domestic animals, somebody gets bitten, you're going to be liable. So, uh, intentional torts that are the most concerned to business, it depends on the business, but certainly for uh, retail establishments, you're thinking about false imprisonment, somebody uh, you suspect is shoplifting, you hold them, there's a shopkeeper's privilege for a reasonable period of time, but other uh, intentional torts include in intentional interference with business, um, defamation is an issue. If you defame another business or another individual, you'll see all that's discussed in your books. Um, products liability, just let me say, that's an umbrella term that includes uh, a number of uh, ways you prove products liability. Breach of contract, uh, you go to a restaurant, you order chili, and there's a thumb in the chili. That's bad normally, unless you're a cannibal uh, and, and enjoy thumbs. Um, uh, so breach of contract. Tort is, again, could be intentional tort uh, or negligence, um, and then you have this uh, concept of strict liability where something is ultra-hazardous, think, you know, cigarettes or things like that. Negligence, a number of defenses. First, you've got to prove negligence that there's a duty, breach, causation, damages. If somebody assumes the risk, if you're into extreme cage fighting and, and you go in and uh, you get injured, that's your problem. Uh, you'll often see if you go to a professional sporting event, they tell you if you get whapped in the head by a baseball or hockey puck, basketball, whatever, that's, that's, uh, you've assumed the risk. You'll see there's a number of defenses discussed in your book. Various damages are available uh, for a tort claim. The objective is to return you in the position, put you in the position that you would have been had you not been injured. Uh, normally, these are called compensatory uh, consequential damages. Um, rarely do you see punitive damages. At least some states, uh, you can't get them. Um, there is this concept, however, of comparative negligence. Very important concept to understand. This is the idea that even if you uh, cause your own injury in some way, you still can recover. You compare the negligence between the parties. Think of the McDonald's hot coffee case where a woman spilled coffee on herself. She sued uh, McDonald's and McDonald's had to pay because they knew uh, they, they were negligent. They knew that the coffee uh, was 3,000 degrees and would be uh, damaging, and they had paid off on other things. Joint and several liability, this is a term that simply suggests that in certain circumstances, uh, the liability, uh, if you're like in a partnership and one of your partners screws up, 
uh, you are going to be liable for their screw up even though you didn't do it. So it, it's called joint and several liability. Uh, one of the things to uh, think about. All right, uh, some videos I have here for your understanding. Very good on basic torts, the different types of torts, defamation, defenses, uh, basic elements of a negligence, and what does it mean to exercise due care? Remember, negligence, the deal is, uh, you know, you have a duty to exercise reasonable care. Now, with a professional, that duty is uh, increased, uh, so you have malpractice. This is a basic for, basis for malpractice. is really a negligence-type claim. Intentional torts we've, we've talked about of concern to business and uh, consumers. Fraud is huge. Uh, this is, um, you know, uh, a reliance on a false statement of fact that results in damages. You'll see the elements are discussed in your book uh, and the other ones that we've talked about. Intentional inf interference with contractual relations and things like that. Make sure you uh, uh, know those elements because they will be uh, uh, part of the exam. Uh, criminal law, we're, we're, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on criminal law, but it's important to understand that uh, as business people, you can be charged with a crime, obviously, uh, and corporations can be prosecuted. Uh, so, um, but the big difference is obviously the burden of proof. Civil is by a preponderance, criminal beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, and uh, there are a boatload of uh, uh, protections for people that are accused of crime. So, for example, uh, your Fifth Amendment uh, right uh, to uh, not incriminate yourself, uh, your Sixth Amendment right to counsel. Um, you know, in, in our country, the presumption is that you're innocent until proven guilty. In other countries, that's not the case. I think it's important to understand that. that if you go overseas and you have a problem, you don't carry uh, the rights with you. Uh, you're subject to that country, country's rules and regulations and whatever rights they have. Again, language is important. You are sued. You are sued in uh, in tort, and you are prosecuted for a crime. Don't don't mix mix those up. And in in a in a uh, civil case, the issue is liability. In a criminal case, the issue is guilt, not innocence. Again, uh, in a criminal case, uh, a court uh, jury is not adjudicating the innocence of the person. They're adjudicating whether or not the state has proved each element of a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, two elements necessary before a person can be found guilty of a crime is intent and the act. So every statute, every criminal statute, has some a level of intent that has to be established by the government, beyond a reasonable doubt, and an act, like uh, premeditated murder. Uh, there has to be premeditation, planning, whatever, and then obviously the act, the murder. Uh, a number of categories of crimes. Uh, uh, the, the big ones are felony, misdemeanor, gross misdemeanor. Uh, one of the things I would emphasize for you is that a traffic violation is not a crime. So you don't get these uh, rights, a, like a speeding ticket doesn't kick in your, your right to counsel, things like that. Keep that in mind. Um, uh, some other resources you'll see here. I've got a couple great examples of, of how corporations can be held liable for crimes. This is... Uh, for example, in uh, the banking industry or in food, uh, uh, food producers have been uh, held liable for crimes. So keep, keep that in mind. And that's the end of week two.